Hi Edmund, welcome to the Valley Current Show. Hi Fami, yeah. it's a very nice t-shirt. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Nice, cantik t-shirt. Yeah. Oh. I see here you, you're wearing a Malaysia Bebas dari ISA. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that we want to talk about. There's going to be a, a, a kind of proposed amendments that's going to be tabled in Parliament uh, yeah, in July. And I just wanted to know uh, from your point of view as a, as a lawyer, as a legal practitioner, what do you think these amendments will achieve? And, and in light of, I think, larger civil liberties kind of issues in Malaysia. No, I, I think the amendments uh, will not be very much. It's just wayang kulit. Um, I think there's so much pressure that the, the government couldn't do anything else but to move some amendments. Mm. So what what the, kind of amendments again? The two-year period will probably come down to one year, uh, but then the minister can still extend detention indefinitely. And then the 60 days by the police can still be, um, uh, will be brought down to 30 days. And then uh, it still can be um, uh, continuously um, extended. Um, then, of course, the treatment and um, the way the de detainees uh, handle uh, legal access, they probably give. But all this, I think, uh, are just uh, wayang, it's, it's mm. sideshow. Um, mm. I think uh, it's time to just repeal the whole ISA because mm. the militant communist insurgency is over. Yeah. Um, and it's time to move on. If we are talking about uh, anti-terrorism laws, we should have a new act uh, counter to just to counter terrorism. Mm -hmm. And and you mentioned earlier before we started shooting about uh, that the ISA currently only actually detained is is currently only uh, there are only fifteen people who are held under the ISA and they are held in Kamunting. Uh, whereas we should also pay attention to uh, the emergency ordinance, yeah, and uh, the dangerous drugs act. Exactly. Um, we are always talking about ISA. Of course, there are only now 15 people after so much pressure and after the 50,000 people protest. But the emergency ordinance, there's 800 to 1,000 more people in Simpan Rengam now. Uh, mainly people from the lower classes, the uneducated, the poor. And I think there are about four to 500 under the Dangerous Drugs Act, preventive measures. So I think we, if they're looking at amending the ISA, you should also look at amending the emergency ordinance and the Dangerous Drugs Act. So how come you, you in, in your opinion, we don't know, the mission, mission population doesn't really talk about um, the emergency ordinance or the Dangerous Drugs Act? Yeah, because the campaigns have always been focused on the ISA. So Swaram and GMI have actually focused on the ISA because there are a lot of political campaigners, mm. po political activists, politicians who have been arrested under uh, the ISA. And the, the Emergency Ordinance and the Dangerous Drugs Act, what, what are they for? It's mainly for gangsters, oh. for emergency ordinance <laughs> and... The dangerous drugs act mainly for alleged gangsters, sorry, right. and alleged uh, drug traffickers or drug addicts. Right, right, yeah. and so drug people, barons. Drug barons, so right. People that we don't really hear about uh, uh. very often in public. So it's, it's 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 really a matter of we will never be able to tell whether they really are or not under yep. these. Uh, now, uh, now I just wanted to pick your 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 brain. Yeah. So if we replace you mentioned uh, replacing uh, and I the I say with another kind of equal. Uh, equivalent counter terrorism act uh, would you support uh, equally uh, kind of uh, this kind of preventive uh, detention without no it's trial? not it's not we shouldn't call it preventive detention we should call it extended periods for investigation that's how it is it's not to prevent somebody from committing a crime it's just that you need more time to investigate a bit more complicated crimes or alleged crimes like terrorism mm. um, so you extend it for 30 days for example currently it's um, 7 plus 7 14 days mm. But with a judicial scrutiny. Under the ISA and the EO, there's no scrutiny at all by the courts. Mm. So the courts don't have a say. Um, under this new law, the courts should have a say. There is a period uh, of, uh, say, maximum 28 days, 30 days. After that, you must charge or release. That's the maximum you can go. Um, then there's a sunset clause, meaning that the law uh, must end unless, repeal, uh, unless um, extended by parliament every two years, for example. Mm -hmm. So there must be all these safeguards which are not uh, currently available under the ISA or EO. Edmund, I wanted to draw uh, your attention to, I guess, uh, Malaysian public and our kind of now re-encountering uh, issues involving the use of specialist language, lah, if I may. Eh? Uh, issues like constitution, issues like these, these, these really symbolic uh, uh, issues, right? Uh, ISA uh, and, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, can you talk about efforts that, that yourself, uh, you yourself are, are, are participating in uh, where you're trying to get more Malaysians uh, acquainted with this kind of what people co would call specialist language? Yeah, I think uh, with the advent of uh, the internet, online stuff and with all your shows like this, 
um, the Bar Council has found it necessary to actually bring legal jargon or legal language to, uh, down to the masses to bring it uh, to make it simpler to understand mm. so for example we have the my constitution campaign mm. after the period crisis yeah. to actually explain what the constitution means and it's not uh, just lawyers who are on board yeah there's, this there's students there's journalists there's activists there's teachers um, there's everyone mm. even we have uh, 14 year old uh, kids uh, helping us so that's uh, an effort by the bar council uh, of course, they're working with um, different sites uh, on Lawyer Baroque as well, that yeah, t-shirt yeah. that you're wearing. And the t-shirt that you're wearing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've run out of stock. Yeah, so cannot buy anymore. But Not yet. Yeah. So, so uh, what do you hope to, to achieve by, by... Because, for example, in my memory, right, uh, my first acquaintance with words like habeas corpus was during the, the Anwar trial, mm. you know, the first Anwar trial. So, mm. like, oh, habeas corpus, oh my God, what word is this? So, so what do you think, uh, do you hope to achieve, you know? By, Basically, by... the rakyat has to be empowered. And I think the general elections are coming in 2013, we should stop voting for personalities or voting for parties. We should be, start voting based on issues. And these are some of the issues, the constitutional crisis, for example, in Perak, the issues of detention without trial. Mm. If we're not happy with these things, and it's the government that's actually uh, pushing all this out, then we should uh, vote against the government, mm. for example. Uh, if if we believe in these issues, then of course we vote for the government. So I think the legal issues are so intertwined with our daily lives that everybody actually needs to know about it, even although, though it, uh, even though it may not directly affect you. Yeah. Although technically, when in a in an election season, there's no actual government; it's just a caretaker yeah, government, supposed to be, and incumbents. I got him there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what what can but the we... federal court doesn't think that that's that's true? We tried to argue that before, but. Right. Okay. So, okay. Um, now, I guess, what, what more can we expect? Because actually what we're seeing is uh, uh, quite a kind of uh, movement, uh, gerakan of, among the lawyers. Mm. And why do you think there's, there's more active activity that, that we're seeing now? Or is that, has, has that always been? It's just that we never really knew that. No, was because that. the lawyers are fed up. The lawyers are fed up with the system. They're fed up with uh, what's happening in court, uh, what they see in court. We argue cases in court and the government just comes and willy-nilly makes uh, applications academic, for example, the habeas corpuses. So, we just, I think that many lawyers, especially the young ones, just really want to do something. They have a lot of energy, much more than you and I. And they're just asking, give us some guidance, how do you do it? So, we just help them. Uh, some of them who don't want to go to court or don't want to uh, become so agitative or so irritating, they, they would rather write articles on, on, on Lawyer Baroque or, right. on the, or working on the campaign. Yeah. Because while it's empowering the right yeah, they're also empowering themselves. Yeah. Uh, they feel that they're doing something and I think it's very important that you have the younger generation coming up. And you see a lot of the voters are actually young voters. Um, in the next two years, if we continue this way, in this uh, positive way, we'll probably see a whole new generation of Malaysians uh, wanting to uh, be able to reform um, the system that we have at the moment. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you. And teruskan dan semoga berjaya. Thank you.